looks like you could live in it. I wanna like shrink down and make a little house and live inside of there. Hello, my name is Benji and today I'm doing something very exciting. I'm converting my IKEA greenhouse cabinet into a paludarium. And if you don't know what that is, a paludarium is pretty much like an enclosure that has a water body as well as land. So I'll have aquatic plants and terrestrial plants growing inside of the cabinet. I made a video a couple of months back where I built my IKEA Redsta cabinet. I already discussed lights and equipment in that video, so I don't want to drag it into this one. Also, if you have a Millsbow cabinet, which is the taller IKEA cabinet that people use for the greenhouse, yeah, this video will still likely apply to you. You'll just probably need more materials since it's a bigger cabinet. I've been kind of like bored and uninspired by my current greenhouse cabinet setup. Right now, it's sort of just a place to hold plants and nothing more. So I wanna do something fun with it and something a little bit different. This is my first time doing anything like this, like a large build. So I made a lot of mistakes along the way, which you will see in the video, but I feel like me making those mistakes is really beneficial to you guys because you guys can learn from what I did wrong so you don't have to repeat the mistakes that I made. I'll also be including all of the supplies in the description as well as the links. Also, this video is sponsored by Botanicas and I'll talk more about them later in the video, but they supplied a lot of the plants that I'm gonna be using in the cabinet. They sent me a bunch of really cool begonias and they're an Etsy shop and I'll put the link for them in the description as well. So yeah, let's get started. In the original build of my IKEA cabinet, I made the hole for the cords way too small, so I had to have my friend Jahao come over and help me drill through the metal grommet that I used, which was a really bad idea. I don't recommend you use that. I don't have a drill strong enough, and I also don't have the hole saw anymore. Thank you to Jahao for coming over and helping me with that. Okay, first I'm gonna clean out the IKEA cabinet um, and clean it off and stuff and get it ready to seal up with expanding foam. So I'm gonna seal all of the cracks to retain humidity and make sure no water is leaking out. Also, when I put this cabinet together, I sprayed all of the metal with a water resistant coating. Also, it's pretty messy in my house right now because I'm setting this up and it requires a lot of like moving things around and supplies. So you're gonna see a lot of stuff around, but just ignore that. Making things like terrariums and aquariums are just so cool to me because it's like you're creating a little world, a little ecosystem, like plants and animals and little critters and stuff. So I've just been really into that, like creating art with plants, I think is my main like interest I've realized is just like creating something beautiful with plants, no matter what it is, like an aquarium, a terrarium, anything with plants, I'm there. Okay, and the first thing I'm gonna do is add the expanding foam to the cracks and to the background. So I'm masked up and I got my gloves on. I don't have any disposable gloves, so I'm just using these old kitchen gloves. So this is great stuff insulating foam and I've never actually used this before. Okay, so it says to shake it vigorously for one minute and then put the straw on and then I'm gonna just squeeze. Here I'm using expanding foam to seal the gaps in the cabinet, but I would actually recommend that you use aquarium silicone. Down the line, I ran into issues with water leaking, and I think that the silicone would be a much better sealant. I might have just used the foam wrong, but I had issues with it down the line. So I'm not gonna wear gloves anymore because these are like super hot and difficult to use. Also, it doesn't smell that bad, so I'm not gonna use the mask anymore. But yeah, I'm gonna use these cups to kind of build up the back um, and add some depth and shape and stuff because the foam runs out pretty quick and I don't want to use too much to build up the background so I'm gonna lay these flat on the back of the cabinet and then foam over them and the foam should hold it in place and then just look like maybe a rock hopefully we'll see so I'm gonna have the waterfall start on the left corner of the cabinet and then come down and then it'll fill in this basin. I'm just gonna use like a glass bowl or something to act as the reservoir for the waterfall. So I'm gonna be shaping the path of the waterfall with the foam. So I'm gonna use these here to build up a slope. That way the water can run down smoothly. This is what I'm gonna be using as my pond and it's going to be right here. Here, I think so I have to try and make it so the water will fall back into 
this bowl. So you want the lower portion of the waterfall to be protruding farther out than the top. That way the water has somewhere to land on. It won't just go straight down. And here I'm putting in the hose for the waterfall. That way it is hidden behind the foam. So I'm just foaming over it um, along with the plastic cups that I'm using. To be a part of this time in this universe together, even though there are a lot of scary and certain things happening, I'm just glad we have this loving, wonderful community of people. Brush my hair like I was living. She brushes it, I'd be done by three to one to come with, you know, go with me and, and take a little set of plates and if she wanted a little fair. And I have the hose for the waterfall where I want it to be. Now I'm going to start placing plants that are like mounted and also pots onto the foam so it can stick. This is a panel of tree fern. People use this as an alternative to moss poles because it's really absorbent and porous and plants can attach onto it, especially in a high humidity environment. So I'm going to attach some of these to the back of the panel so I can have plants climb up and grow on this tree fern. Now I'm going to add some of these cork bark bits to the background and foam them on just to add some like texture and detail. So now I need to add the glass panel that is going to hold the substrate in the front. I didn't allow the cork bark that I just put on to dry enough so a bunch of it just fell off but that's okay because I think I can just use silicone to glue it on. Okay, so it looks crazy, but I can see the vision. This is one of the shelves that the Rudsta cabinet comes with. Normally they're like this, but it fits perfectly in the front. I'm going to use the foam to seal it in place. I would actually recommend using aquarium silicone to attach the glass panel because with the foam I got issues with water leaking and that might just be me using the foam wrong, but I think aquarium silicone would be a much better sealant. Okay, everything is pretty much dry. The glass panel right here is pretty stuck in place. So I'm going to apply the black silicone all over the foam and then cover that up with cocoa core and dried moss. So here's another instance where I would change what I did. I'm applying silicone to the entire back of the cabinet. Not only was this a really difficult process, it also didn't work for my intended purpose. You'll see later, but instead of doing the silicone step, I would just lay my sheet moss directly onto the expandable foam before it dries, because then the sheet moss will just stick onto the foam and you won't have to work with the silicone, which smells horrible and is so difficult to work with. Okay, so the silicone didn't really work. As you can see, the moss sheet didn't really attach, but my friend Jahao gave me this very good tip to use like a bendable um, metal wire to pin it into the foam background. Since the foam is really soft and easy to um, puncture into with the wire, it'll just pin the moss down. And since it's a sheet, I only have to pin certain areas. Um, so yeah. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm gonna cut these into small pieces and then bend it like this and then push it into the foam. Okay, you need to make it a little bit longer. <laughs> Maybe this one. I'm gonna push one in first and then do the next one. Okay, I think I've broken through. It's secured. Nice. Now I'm just gonna go through this whole thing and do little pins everywhere. Then I'll turn it right side up and see if anything falls. Okay, it doesn't look the best right now, but I can definitely see the potential. Once I add some wood and plants and the bottom and the mist is going and I add live moss and the waterfall is going, I'm gonna test out the waterfall to see how the water movement is. Now for the moment of truth. Oh no. Okay, I'm kind of considering something a little bit crazy. I don't know 
if this is a good idea or a horrible idea, but I'm thinking of not even doing a container pond, but just having the bottom layer be the pond or like the lake. So I had this really grand and ambitious idea to have the entire bottom portion of the cabinet just be water. And I also wanted to add two more waterfalls. So the cabinet could be this really cool, like three waterfall mountain thing. And yeah, that failed horribly because water was leaking everywhere. I don't know, maybe I just didn't do it correctly. Maybe if you use the aquarium sealant, it would work, but also the cabinet isn't meant to hold that much weight, so I wouldn't recommend doing that. But the good thing that came out of this was that I decided to add moss onto the sides of the cabinet, and I just applied the sheet moss directly onto the wet foam, and that was so much faster and easier than doing the silicone step. I also ended up painting the outside of the cabinet black to hide the white of the foam. I have the pond positioned where I want it. I shouldn't get any drips or anything going into the substrate, so now I'm going to add my substrate. I'm going to be using Leca as the main base layer, and then a mix of cocoa husk and sphagnum moss for the rest of it. I put down most of the sheet moss and it looks a lot better in my opinion. This is where I'm going to put my mister. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the cabinet build. I laid down all the moss and the waterfall's running well and the mister's working, so now I'm going to add plants. Now I'm putting in some really cool begonias. These were sent to me by Botanicas, who is the sponsor for this video. This is my first sponsor for YouTube, so thank you to Botanicas for reaching out to me. They're an Etsy shop that specializes in begonias, but they also sell other really interesting tropical plants. They're super knowledgeable and they were able to answer any questions I had. So yeah, thank you to Botanicas for helping me explore the genus of begonias. These begonias will do really well in this cabinet because it's a very high humidity environment. You can kind of put the plants anywhere and they'll be okay. Like some plants I'm just pinning up against the wall of the cabinet and wrapping moss around the roots and they're doing just fine. It's nice being able to have the freedom to put plants pretty much wherever you want. This is my Monstera obliqua that I grew from a single node. I'm gonna plant it here so it can climb up and grow as tall as it wants. Um, yeah, I love this plant. And this is actually one of the main reasons why I decided to build this cabinet. I wanted this plant to have more space to grow. As for what plants would do well in this kind of environment, I think that most of our house plants would work. Philodendron, Monstera, Begonias, Alocasia, maybe Hoya. Obviously, mosses would really like this. Pretty much anything that enjoys high humidity will do really well in this kind of cabinet. I would just recommend not putting in 
plants that may get too large too fast because they can really overtake your cabinet, um, especially in these ideal conditions. A lot of our philodendron and monstera and stuff will start to grow very quickly. So for example, I wouldn't really put a monstera deliciosa in here because that is just going to be massive in this cabinet. So try and lean more towards smaller leaf plants. That way you can sort of keep the scale inside of your cabinet. So that way it still looks like a miniature world. It's been about a week since I finished planting everything and putting everything together. And so I'm gonna give you guys like a quick tour and an update on how things are going. So far, everything is going really well. The only issue that I'm really having is a small leaking issue, but I've pretty much solved that. And the amount of water leaking has drastically decreased. So I think I'm at the tail end of it. So here is how the cabinet looks in the kitchen area. It's really pretty. It adds a really nice light at night like a nice warm light. Here is the cabinet. It looks really beautiful. This door sometimes doesn't shut properly. So I have this stick that I've been using in between the handles to keep it in place. So yeah, that's been working out pretty well. I think it actually looks pretty cool though. It adds some outside element to the cabinet. Earlier I was talking about a little issue with leaking. So I'm getting some water leaking at the front legs and I think that's because I did the sealant with the foam incorrectly or something. So yeah, that's why I recommend using silicone to seal all of the gaps instead of using the foam. I think that's a much more effective sealant because I use it for building aquariums. But yeah, I'm just using these little plastic cups underneath the feet for now. See, there's some water coming out, but it's not really that bad. It's, um, it's manageable. So right now I don't have the waterfall running because it's kind of loud when it's open and I don't want you guys to have to like hear that the entire time. Let's start with the bottom area of the cabinet. So all of the plants are doing really well. I had some problem with leaf melting, but that is because when I unboxed these begonias, I didn't put them into a high humidity environment and the leaves kind of just started to deteriorate. A lot of the older leaves are browning and like melting, but that's totally my fault. And then the newer leaves that are coming out are perfectly fine. You can see that happening here. This is an older leaf totally melting off, but this newer leaf that's coming in is looking really nice. I added in some frog moss just to add some greenery because the dried moss over time it loses its green coloration. Like this used to pretty much all be green but now it's all just like brown. So this corner is doing really well. I got a lot of new leaves coming out so I'm pretty excited about that. Every All of the begonias are doing well and they're putting out new leaves for me. There are also these random little sprouts coming out everywhere from the dried moss. I'm guessing there were like seeds in the moss that are now sprouting because of the moisture and it'll be cool to see what they turn into as they mature. Are my philodendron white princess cuttings that I put up and they're doing really well. Um, I took one out and it's starting to root. What's really nice about having this cabinet is that you can put plants wherever you want. Um, you can just like stick them in the wall and wrap their roots in moss and pin them with the metal wire that I was using and they'll grow roots and they'll be totally fine. It's super cool. You have a lot of freedom with where you place your plants in a setup like this. You like cut an aeroid like a philodendron or a monstera, just stick the node into the moss and keep it wet and I feel like you're guaranteed to have a successful propagation. I do have fans in here, but I'm not using them right now because I noticed that it dried out my plants a little more than I would want and dried out the moss, but I don't really have any issues with mold or fungus or anything, and I think that may be because I added a cleanup crew, which would be the isopods and springtails, so they eat decaying stuff and mold and fungus, so yeah, I don't have airflow right now, and it's doing totally fine, so 
Yeah. So moving on to where the mister is, I have some live sphagnum moss growing here and also some carnivorous plants. These are sundews. Then I have more frog moss. Here is a ripsalis uh, mounted on cork and then a fern that I just attached to the wall. And moving to the left a little bit where the waterfall area is, this is a utricularia. Um, this is also a carnivorous plant, but I believe it catches things with its roots. It eventually puts out a really pretty flower, so I'm waiting for that to happen. Here is an alocasia phrytic I put near the base of the waterfall and then some other mosses. This moss here is super cool. When it dries up, it does this thing where it kind of looks dead, but when you water it and mist it, it expands. This is a pretty cool plant. Um, I forgot its name. It's like Ficus villosa, I think. It's a hairy creeping fig. So weird looking, I just love it so much. Now going up the waterfall area, this is where the button fern is and it's doing really well, just being here close to a lot of light. I also have this regular non-variegated high here. Um, it was kind of struggling for a bit, but now it's putting out a little bit of new growth. So I can tell that this is good now. And then moving to the left, this is where I have my Burl Marx fantasy wall growing. Um, there's like probably like 30 nodes of this plant. Um, oh, this one just fell out. I need to put this somewhere. And so going down, these are some begonia from Botanicas. These ones didn't suffer as much as the other ones in terms of like old leaf melting, and they're all doing very well now. Very happy, and they look so cool like growing on this wall. It gives like a mountainous appearance. And this one has quickly become one of my favorites. It has this like blue metallic -y shine to it. Then as you go down, this is where my Monstera obliqua is. And it is super happy in this location. Um, it's putting out a new leaf already. And it's putting on aerial root going down to the ground that you can see right there. This is my Begonia amphioxus, and it suffered a lot from the old leaves melting. But as you can see, new leaf is doing well, so this one is gonna do just fine. And down here in the pond, the frog bit and the azola have really exploded. Now it's like an entire mat of floating aquatic plants that I think looks super cool. So I took these out for a little bit, but I have these little Studio Ghibli miniatures. Um, this one is from Princess Mononoke, it's a forest spirit. And then this is a little guy from my neighbor Totoro. Um, and I think they just look like really cute in this cabinet. So far, I'm like absolutely in love with this thing. It looks so cool in the home. Whenever people see it, they're like, what is that? And they're always so intrigued. For maintenance, pretty much all I'm doing is leaving the light on for about 10 hours a day. The mister is on a timer, so it only turns on for like 10 seconds every 30 minutes or so. Right now, I just have it on the entire time for the video. Once every morning, I use this big pressurized sprayer just to lightly spray everything down to keep it moist. And yeah, so far, super easy, and I love this thing. And I can't wait for stuff to grow in and green up, and I just know it's gonna look so much better in like a month, so I'm really excited for that. Thank you so much for watching. If I missed anything, which I bet I did, in regards to the build, or if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments, and I'll do my best to respond. But yeah, I'm so excited to see how this is gonna turn out in the future, because it just, like, like, it looks like you could live in it. I want to like shrink down and make a little house and live inside of there.